Hey, what's up everyone? Matt Tuck from Bolt of My Valentine here and you're watching Tattooed.com. Hey guys, it's Mischievous Mel and I am here at the Fillmore in Michigan sitting on the couch with Matt Fuckles of Bullet for My Valentine. What's up? I am super excited to be sitting next to you. We have talked to everybody in the band. I've been a super fan for a while and it's just really excited to talk to the voice of the band. Cool. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. And speaking of being here, you are here with the Edge Rock Radio, Rockwell on Scene Music Magazine, and Tattoo.com. Yay. Absolutely. And bullet. Happy days. Happy days. So, you guys, you guys, there is no, like, sleep for the, you know, rest for the wicked. You guys just are balls to the wall, whether it's here or across the pond. This tour is, well, all your tours are fucking amazing and long. But that being said, how do you decompress afterwards? What's, what's your spot where you can be what we call normal <laughs> um just being able to go home and have that normality for a while which for me is is being a dad and just and just get into the you know back to what kind of makes me tick really which is parenthood really you know i love music always have done this is my my job my passion my my motivation and everything you know but since being a dad you know he's totally changed my perspective on everything and uh, yeah so when i go home that's that's all i want to do is just be a dad you know you know, speaking of being a parent, I'm a mom, and part of how I got into your guys' music, um, my daughter, who is now 19 and moved out, um, used to show me, like, the newer band, well, the hardcore, you know, bands, and she's like, Mom, listen to this, and Bullet was one of the bands she showed me, so we used to do the Mommy and Me Warp Tour and go to the shows, and is it just overwhelming to you to think that you have, like, crossed, you, you gapped a generation, like a mom and a daughter, I mean, it's... Yeah. It's cool, yeah. It's, it's not something you ever think about growing up as a kid when you want to be in a band. And obviously then we got a record deal and start doing it professionally. And we just kind of get together, write music and try and enjoy it, you know. But these other things and stories we hear then are, are all amazing things that we never anticipated, you know. And we've touched a lot of people's lives in really positive ways. And that's, a, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, it's not something you, you really think about when you're in the band, you know. But as the years have progressed, we've been doing it a long time now. We've heard hundreds if not thousands of, of stories from people that our band has touched their lives in really positive ways and it's, it's incredible you know it's amazing and, and speaking of touching in a positive way um we, we're going to your new album by the way is amazing Thank you. um and for me as a fan looking at the older bullet music and the bullet music now i uh, i like the way that you guys have grown by by that i mean you know I get mad at fans who are like, well, it's not what I heard when they first started out. Well, I hope not, because that means that, one, they actually ha know more than, like, three notes. They actually have talent. And you grow and you change as a person, as you say, like, you know, pre-child, post-child, you know, the struggles when you first start out and then when you make it. Um, how has that affected you personally, like, um, just across the board? Um, it it hasn't had a, a, a massively dramatic effect on my life and my personality. Um, obviously, it's it's I've achieved my dream as a kid. You know, I've 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 done what I set out to do in men, many ways, multiple times. You know, but it's a really hard life. It's really hard. It's, you know, the side of the of the band which people will never see is this part where I have to sit in here for ten hours and just you know miss my boy and my family and my friends and. And all that stuff, you know what I mean? But it, it's 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 the sacrifice that you have to make when you do what we do. So it's it's all good, you know. I've I've you know, I've had dark moments, I've had high moments, you know, but I guess it's all part of the story and lifestyle of being in a rock band, you know. It's uh it is what it is. <laughs> it's it's tough, you know, but it's just when it's high, it's high, when it's low, it's it's super low, you know. See and and that right there, your highs and your lows and your dark moments your passion and it, it's raw and real like mm -hmm. you there are some bands that are just out there to say thank you for the paycheck record company thank you for this you know but there's no real passion they're just going through the motion mm -hmm. but your your music it, the words they just seep in um can you tell us a little bit about how that helped you through your dark times yeah well i, I think what you just said there this new album, Gravity, is anything but going through the motions. That's the whole point of this record, was to not do that. Not to replicate stuff we've done in the past musically, lyrically, creatively, visually. Everything about this album is, is new. And we didn't, and we felt like taking a step back in the direction of writing in the same way we've always done was standing still, if not going in reverse, you know? So, so it was important to us that this album was something different. And then combining that with like, 
my kind of darker moments over the last couple of years is a very powerful, potent package, you know. And um, I don't know. I've, I've one of the lucky ones that I've had an outlet for my kind of like depressive state of minds and and stuff like that. And you know, it's just yeah, it's it's I don't know not to describe it really. It's difficult. You know, I have an outlet for it, and I've used it, and thankfully, it's 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 turned into a positive rather than snowballed or, or spiraled into a more darker circle you know so so, so you yeah. exercise your demons by using your music yeah i didn't want to i didn't want to at all because i felt that putting that out there for all to see lyrically was not a weakness but it was not something i wanted to ever really show the world you know because once it's out there for me it's a far more real tender vulnerable side to my personality that i've never really wanted to show anyone you know but i thought the time was right to do it and as soon as i started letting my guard down and letting it come out it became quite apparent that it was a far more potent real i don't know song which i think a lot of people can relate to which is in my eyes the key to the band getting to another level again is is that kind of i don't know reaction and the connection you get with the listener rather than just talking about some bullshit that doesn't mean anything just because it's a song and you have to write some songs this album was a whole it's a whole unit of work and it's a whole concept i guess you'd call it you know it's it's all about me and that sounds to some people like oh it's all about you well it is i wrote the songs you know and i felt like i had a lot of things to say and got off my chest so i did you know well as a fan and as a person who has um experienced some issues um thank you because what you did you know it's it's so when you're physically hurt when you go to somebody you're like God, my arm's broke, there's a bone sticking out, people can see it. Mm -hmm. And when there's a blood leaking from you, people can see it. But when your soul is like ripped and torn in pieces and you just feel like you're the only person, like hearing words and connecting to that, mm -hmm. you have helped so many people by like just even talking about it in the music. So thank you for that. Awesome. And wow, that was really deep and awesome. Mm. So now that we went deep and awesome, let's talk about some fun stuff. Um, you, on your days off, what do you do besides music obviously we know your music but there's got to be more to you than that <laughs> yeah on, on tour days off usually uh i mean that one day you get you know <laughs> yeah basically we'll just roll up at a hotel we'll all go in freshen up go to our rooms have a little bit of peace and quiet away from each other because obviously we live together on buses for months and months and months so it's nice to just have a room have 10 minutes just decompress first thing i'll do is get on the get on the old smartphone and, and call home speak to my boy Time difference, you know, we have to time it right because he's in school and stuff. So, as you came in there, we just wrapped up a conversation and stuff. So, that will that will give you my fix of the day. Then it puts a smile on my face, and I'm ready to face the day. Then you know, it's uh, having that connection at home is massively important for all of us. Three of us out of the four in the band are, are dads, so that's what we do every day. You know, we wake up and get straight on the phone, uh, speak to our loved ones and our, our kids and stuff, and then. I said, you're ready for the day. The day I don't get that for whatever reason, we may have missed it or he's fallen asleep or he's had some clubs or goes to a sleepover and I don't get that fix. It's not, it doesn't make me feel good for the day, you know, but it is what it is. Um, and that's it, really. We'll just go and have some food, maybe do a bit of bowling, maybe do some sightseeing, just normal stuff, you know, just try, just try and keep the brain and the body active. I'll go to the gym. If there's a gym I can find, I'll, I'll go to the gym straight away as well. I think for me, being having a physical... Uh, workout and regimen keeps my brain working as well, you know. I'm so glad you brought up the gym because I recently started bodybuilding. I can flip the tractor tire. But cool. I want to thank you guys because your music is part of what I've on my beast list when I work out. Uh -huh. So what's on your music playlist? Do you, guys, do you listen to you on uh, the playlist or what do you play at the gym? I like to have silence. Really? Uh, yeah, I like to have ninja focus and it's just me against me. That that to me would be hard because I always have so much going on up here using music mm -hmm. to drown it out. Yeah. Um, except for when I'm lifting super heavy, then I have to concentrate because I don't want to break anything like my body. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. I like to. Um, it's hard when you go to a gym because usually they'll have music blasting. So unfortunately, you're at the kind of mercy, mercy of whatever their music choice is, you know. But I will try and just block it out. But when I go like a hotel gym, if I'm lucky enough to kind of get it to myself, it's just just me against me in a, in a mirror, you know. So what's your favorite kind of workout? Like, are you a legs man and abs, oh, arms? Man. I hate, I hate legs. I'm not a leg guy, um, but I do try and give them a bit of a kick in now and again. It's just more balance for me. I like to kind of do a bit of everything. I don't really concentrate on one area more than the other. Um, so if I do have a an hour and a half, two hours, one hour at the gym, I'll make sure I kind of hit every area. So it's a full body thing. 
Are you a battle roper? Do you like the battle? Love battle ropes. Yeah, I don't get to do it a lot because the hotel gyms you go to are usually shit. Yeah. And we don't usually get the luxury of having a ton of equipment. So you have to be creative and just make the best of the situation. But yeah, when I'm at home and I go to my gym and I get on, yeah, battle ropes, all that stuff, you know. So you being physical like that and wanting to stay active, is there any chance that you would ever want to do like Ultimate Ninja Warrior or something like that? I'd, l I'd love to. I'd love to do stuff like that. I've always, I've done like, the Tough Mudder things back home. Do you know what Tough Mudder is? Oh, it's like yeah. yeah it's, it's a hell course where you carry, people carry people and yeah. army crawl. And, yeah, yeah, I've done a few of those, like 13 mile kind of cross country, crazy obstacle course things. I've done those a few times. I love them. I good. I like that. Again, I just, it's not the, the macho side of me. It's, it's more the, 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 the challenge, the mental rather than the physical about overcoming certain things you don't think you can do or want to do and doing it. I've always been into that, you know. Yeah, I see it as like an escape and an instant gratification. Like most things, like even being in the music business, as you know, you had to fight tooth and claw and nail year mm. after year to make it. But when you start lifting, you'll be like, five pounds? Oh my God, today I'm 10. I, I'm into That's instant good. right It's away. good. You get a buzz, man. You do get addicted to it. Yeah. I've backed off the last few years just because I just really haven't had time and doing touring and writing and stuff. You know what I mean? It's, it's really hard to full on dedicate to that side of working out because it is very addictive. And I did go down that road for a little bit. But it starts to overtake everything, you know, your sleeping patterns, your your, your water food. intake, your, your food prep. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lifestyle choice, which I don't get the pleasure of doing. I mean, look look around you. It's it's not a great place to be if you want to become a, a ripped kind of athlete. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's tough, but, you know, I make the most of it. And when I get home, like I land, if you know, if we have an overnight flight from like L.A. to London, land at six in the morning by nine, I'm in the gym. You know, so it's good. I like to get into a habit and vice versa. When we came here, like we flew into Kansas, you know, the morning after arriving, I'm straight in the gym trying to get my body and, and mind synced up again, you know. So is your child musical? Yeah, yeah. He's very musical. He's got a fantastic voice, great rhythm. Um, and every Saturday, well, not every Saturday, he's just enrolled like about a month ago. We, we, he's in a music school on a Saturday. So they're kind of introducing him to... Uh, uh, music, kind of what well, instruments and and all sorts like singing, choir groups, um, all kinds of things. It's just basically, it's a, I don't know, an introduction to music, an all round kind of introduction. So just, obviously, you're supportive because your music. Were your parents and your family supportive of your dream to be a rock and roll star? <laughs> they were. They were unbelievably. Yeah, like um, That's good they would they would take me to like band practices on a Sunday before I could even had a driving license, let alone a car. Um, had no money because I was still at school. They'd buy me guitars for Christmas and equipment and and stuff like that. And my dad bought the band its first kind of PA system so we could actually play as a band and stuff like that. So yeah, they were very supportive and it was, it was great, you know, and thankfully that's probably a huge part in it becoming a reality is I was able to, I don't know, keep going, you know, and didn't have any restrictions, which is crazy, you know, because I'm a parent now. So I understand like, oh, I want to be a rock star. Oh, do you now? You know, like, okay, cool. You know, by the time I got to like 23, it was like, oh, it still hasn't happened. So I'm sure there was a moment where they were kind of doubting everything, as was I. But it's all good. Here we are. Oh, shit. You, you, you killed it, man. And, yeah. and having, having parents that, no matter what the thing is, support you. But I mean, I couldn't imagine going to my parents and being like, hey, I want to be a rock star. Because, you know, it's always go to school, be a lawyer, be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... Why? My kid came to me. She started playing bass guitar when she was like five. She's like, I want to do music. I'm like, fuck yeah, do it. Yeah, man. I don't care what he wants to do. As long as he dedicates himself to, to, to do what he wants to do and he loves it. Because as soon as you love it, then, then you never work a day in your life. It's that old saying, you know. So I get that. So, you know, the odds were always stacked against me and the boys growing up, but I, I loved it. So no one was going to take that from me. And so I understand that whatever he wants to do, whether it is a doctor or a rock star or anything in between, just do what he wants to do and I'll support and love him regardless, you know? You know what I love about this interview? I mean, besides you're totally awesome, is every time you talk about your child, your eyes glow. Oh, like cool. you sparkle. It's mm. awesome. I love oh, it. Yeah, no, he's the, he's I can see, the, I can see the, the parent thing there. Yeah, yeah. No, it, you know, he's, he's the light of my life as most kids are to their parents, you know? He's, he's my everything. I love him to bits and... You know, as much as I miss him, he actually keeps me together on the road as well. It uh, gives me a reason to focus and, and keep going to make sure that I can do whatever I need to do for him now when he grows up and becomes a, a young man, you know. Gives him the opportunities and the luxury to do what he wants to do. 
without me kind of, I don't know, ragging on him. I understand, you know. Do you think there would ever be a time in the future, and this is just me wishful thinking, and maybe for you and him, that you would ever do anything musically together? Again, yeah. I mean, I like you know, I'm always trying to push him in to, to singing with me, and and he comes to shows whenever he's able to, and I like to get him and take him on the stage and just show him around, and so yeah, whenever he wants to do something, you know, I think I've got a lot of knowledge and an experience to kind of palm off on him should he want to hear about it, you know. But he's got to want to, he's what got to come to me for that, you know. I'm not just gonna, hey, you know, kind of, I don't know, suffocate him with my knowledge and stuff like that you know he's got to want it to know it and then i'll give him everything he wants well sir you are you have been very awesome to us you shared your time and i loved those stories and i know like i said you were super busy this man holy shit well we were in Camden, new jersey with you guys last night so you know the ride <laughs> yeah, yeah it was a great show last night man how do you guys like it it was pretty awesome right oh are you kidding me there's like that was the reason for walking clean across the festival grounds was you guys on that stage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah, we're you know, we're keeping on doing what we do and just thanks to everyone for being there for the ride, you know? Well, yes, and thank you. And thank you again for your time. It's been amazing and stay tuned because you are gonna listen to tattoo.com, the Edge Rock Radio and Rockwell on scene music magazine.